a special service plan today. We're going to combine two services in one. We didn't have a chance to recognize our mothers, and we're going to try to take this opportunity today to do that, as well as Memorial Day, uh, remembering the soldiers that have fallen uh, on this particular weekend, uh, honor them as we have all around the country. So uh, I have announcements here, and I'm going to jump into them real quick here. Bear with me. I don't have my glasses, so I'm going to try to try to get this thing back as far as I can so I can see it here a little bit. So <laughs> I think some of you all know what I'm talking about. Like I said, today we're going to honor our mothers, and then after church today, there will be a meeting uh, for the uh, this is meeting today after service for Sunday school and Wednesday night teachers, I guess, up here after church. Uh, just a short meeting, real quick. And then next Sunday, on May the 31st, we'll honor all of our graduates uh, that will be graduating this year. And then on the 31st as well, there will be a meeting after service for anyone work, interested in working in Vacation Bible School. And that time for Vacation Bible School uh, will be rescheduled for a later date. We're just not quite sure yet on when that's going to be, so I guess some of those specifics will be talked about a little bit later on. Sunday mornings still 11 o'clock, and then Wednesday nights will be online services at 7 o'clock, so join in with us if you can't be here. All right? Have I overlooked any announcement this morning? Glad to see everyone out here uh, with us this morning and all those that are watching online. Anything that I've overlooked? If nothing else, before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I'll ask a prayer request. We've got several. We're probably listed on the screen, but is there any... Uh, special prayer requests that we need to make mention of this morning. Just remember this. Is there any others? Let's remember this. Let's remember this one. Is there any others? Just remember this one. Just remember Paulette. Is there any others this morning? Just remember this one. Is there any others? remember these. Is there any other uh, prayer requests this morning?
If we could all stand, please, in honor of those who, the men and women have given their lives in service of our country and brought us the freedom to be here and stand here and do this today. Remember and pray for the families that are left, the people that will so desperately miss them. And let's sing America the Beautiful. should all know 546 it should be on the board and let's sing it like it really did I was seeking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deep we stained within seeking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despair I 
one you gonna put up first, Francis? Which one you gonna put up first? invite everybody that would like to to stand and join along with us in, in learning some of these new songs.
Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here and thank the Lord for another opportunity to be in his house. And I do thank the Lord this morning uh, for his grace and for his mercy and his love. And uh, as David writes, and he said, his mercy endures forever. And uh, I'm so thankful that it does. And if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, we're going to be reading from the uh, book of Exodus, chapter number 17. Exodus chapter number 17 and we do ask for your prayers as uh, we'll try our best to follow the Lord and uh, preach what he's give us this morning Exodus chapter 17 and uh, we're going to begin reading there with verse number 8 uh, in the 17th chapter of the book of Exodus and uh, the Lord's had us here uh, in Exodus and we've been going through it seemed like that the Lord's had us here looking at the children of Israel and uh, their journey that they've been taking and they've been going through the wilderness on their way uh, to the promised land and uh, we find and the Lord give us last week about how uh, the, the Bible said that they got out there and they got to a place and uh, they were thirsty they were looking they were needing water and uh, we know that the Lord had came to Moses and he told Moses he said Moses I want you to take the rod uh, the staff that's in your hand he said I want you to go and I want you to strike the rock and when you smite the rock the Bible says that water uh, will come from the rock so we find here that uh, the Lord uh, he blessed them once again and provided for them while they were there in the desert and we find we're going to pick up in verse 8 this morning uh, we're going to find here a little bit more about uh, what happened to Israel uh, while they were there in the place of uh, Rephidim uh, so we look there at verse 8 the Bible says in chapter 17 says this then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim and Moses said unto Joshua choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand so Joshua did as Moses had said unto him and fought with Amalek and Moses Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek un from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nessi. And he said, for he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And that's all we'd like to read this morning so far. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you once again for just another opportunity lord to be in your house we thank you lord for uh the time of song and and praise and worship this morning that god you have given us and father we thank you lord that father we thank you for the joy that god you've put in our soul today and father we thank you lord for uh, just the the renewness father and the, the freshness lord of life that you give us every day and God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, and your presence and your power that, Father, is with us from day in and day out. God, we pray you bless your word this morning, God. We pray you would do the preaching today, and God, open our hearts to receive it. God, give us the message that, Father, you won't said, and all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. You pray for us this morning. We find here, the Bible said, verse 8, it said, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel. Uh, who was Amalek? When you begin to study on Amalek, uh, you'll find that he was the grandson of Esau. And uh, you'll find this in Genesis chapter 37, uh, where it begins to go through the lineage, and it talks about how Amalek uh, was a grandson of Esau. Now, who was Esau? Uh, we know about Esau, don't we? We know that uh, Esau and Jacob, and uh, we know about them. We know that uh, they were brothers, and we know that, uh, that Jacob had stolen the birthright uh, once you say from Esau and we know that uh, there was bad feelings between those two uh, for years and years and years uh, but we also find we also know uh, the Bible says there that when Esau uh, and Jacob that they finally met with each other once again uh, and they reconvened and they made amends but we find here that uh, the children the lineage the generation of Esau uh, 
Judah and Israel, we find that uh, by Amalek there was war, there was contention, uh, there was continual fighting uh, between these two types of people uh, for generations to come. And we find here that Amalek, the name Amalek, uh, in the Hebrew it means warlike. Uh, that was the meaning of Amalek's name. So we find here that uh, these people, uh, the, the Amalek, his tribe, the uh, Immaculites, uh, the Bible went on to call them. But we find here that they were, the main territory that they were at was in the Sinai Peninsula. Now that was exactly where the children of Israel were journeying. They were going right through uh, the wilderness there, the Sinai Peninsula, the wilderness of Sinai. And they were on their way to the Promised Land. Uh, so we find here that while they were journeying and they can't, came to this place, uh, Rephidim, the Bible said that at this place was where uh, Amulek, they came out and they began to fight and they began to war amongst each other. And the Bible said here uh, that they came out and they fought with Israel uh, in Rephidim. And so we find here in verse number 9, what did Moses say to them? He said, Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out and fight. Uh, my friend, you think about that for just a minute. These people had just been delivered from Egyptian bondage. Uh, they were not trained as soldiers. Uh, they were not trained for to war. Uh, they were not ready for battle. Uh, my friend, they were just people uh, that they were wandering and going through the desert. They were on a journey. And God had been blessing them with food to eat. Uh, he gave them manna in the morning. Uh, he gave them quail in the evening. And He gave them water from the rock. He gave them water at Marah to drink that, were, that was bitter. Uh, but God blessed them and turned the water sweet uh, that they could drink again. Uh, so we find here that God had just blessed them with water from the rock and they were journeying through. They hadn't had time to prepare or to train uh, for war or for battle. These were just common people. They were not soldiers. Uh, uh, but my friend uh, Amulek, he came out and they were ready. They were warriors. They were ready to fight. Uh, but we find here, what did Moses tell Joshua to do? He said, Joshua, here's what I want you to do. Go out and choose us some men uh, to fight. So he put Joshua uh, as the commander. He put him over everyone uh, to get the men ready uh, to go out and fight. But you know the miracle in this is this. Uh, but my friend, they were ordinary people, uh, but yet God made a way and brought victory to them. Amen? Uh, God delivered them here. So we find uh, that to go out and to fight. And he said, tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Uh, if you want to go back and you want to look just a little bit this morning, uh, Moses said he would go out before him, didn't he? He said, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go to the hill, and I'm going to stand there on top of the hill with the rod of God. I want you to turn, if you would, uh, this morning. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4, and the Bible gives us a little bit of description here about the rod that Moses carried. Now, I mentioned this a couple of times in a, the past couple of weeks, but I want to read it to you this morning. Exodus chapter 4, verse number 1 says this, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared to thee. What was Moses talking about? God had called Moses uh, out to lead the people and deliver them from Egyptian bondage. Uh, God called Moses and he said, Listen, he spoke to him in the burning bush. And, and Moses, once again, he answered the Lord and he said, God, he said, These people won't hear me. They won't believe me. They won't hearken unto me. So here's what the Lord said to Moses. He, and the Lord said unto him, What is in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. What did God do for Moses? He added to Moses' faith, didn't he? He added 
added to the faith of Moses. He added to his trust. He added to his confidence in God. That God spoke to him. He gave him a job to do. He gave him a mission. And therefore God proved himself to Moses. Listen my friend. God still is proving himself to you and I day in and day out. Amen. There's things that God does in your life and in my life that adds to our faith. That increases our faith. That gives us more confidence. It gives us more encouragement. It gives us more strength and more faith in the Lord. Amen? And that's exactly what God was doing with Moses here. If you want to look over in uh, verse uh, 17 of the same chapter, the Bible says this, And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Amen? God was getting ready to take this and use it uh, to prove himself to the people. Uh, verse number 20 says this, And he said, And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. What do we know about the rod of Moses? The rod of God that Moses held in his hand. We know that it was the same rod that God told Moses to stretch out over the Nile River. And it became blood. It's the same rod that God told Moses to lift up to the sky. And he said there come thunders and lightnings and great plagues upon the Egyptians. It was the same rod that Moses lifted up. And the frog and the flies and all those things they came upon the Egyptians why? for God to prove himself that he was the one true and living God amen and we find here not only that but it was the same rod uh, that Moses took and waved across the Red Sea and the, way, and the waters parted and the children walked over on gr dry ground it was the same rod that Moses took and he waved and the waters came to again and the Egyptians were swallowed up that day and God brought, brought a great victory to his people he destroyed the enemy that day in the Red Sea it was the same rod that God told Moses to take and use that rod to smite the rock and from the rock came water for the people to drink God was getting ready to do something great and when Moses went up on this hill the Bible said we look it said verse number 10 and Joshua did as Moses had said unto him and fought with Amalek and Moses and Aaron and, and her went out went up to the top of the hill and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed when Moses was up on top of that hill and when the battle was taking place and the battle was going on the Bible said that when Moses lifted up his hand, when he lifted up his hands, Israel prevailed you know what that was representing it represented the very dependence that Moses had upon God, amen, he was depending upon the Lord listen my friend, these people weren't trained for battle, they weren't trained for war, Moses probably knew in the back of his mind that if it was just these people uh, going against Amalek and those people, listen, he knew that they didn't stand a chance. Uh, but he knew that if God would intervene and if God would make a way, that he would bring victory to his people. And my friend, listen, I'll say this morning, maybe you're in a battle, maybe you're in a fight today, and maybe it's just the old everyday common battle that you and I face, the war between the flesh and the Spirit of God. And my friend, the Bible tells teaches us in the book of Galatians that the flesh, that it wars with the Spirit. And the Spirit wars with the flesh. And my friend, if you've been saved by the grace of God and you're a child of God this morning, the Holy Spirit of God lives and dwells inside of you. And the Spirit of God, the Bible said Jesus told us, it leads us, it guides us, it directs us, it teaches us in all truth. The Holy Spirit is there, uh, my friend, to speak to your heart. And you know what's right and what's wrong you know what's sin and what's not you know the way you should go by the direction and the leadership of the Holy Spirit but yet as a human being each and every day man we struggle with it don't we as a human being every day we've got our own human weaknesses and man, we've got our own desires, and we've got our own wants, and we've got our own lust, we've got our own flesh, and, and my friend, the flesh wants to go this way, and, and the flesh wants to do this, and, and do that, but yet the Spirit of God, uh, my friend, begins to lead and says, no, I want you to go the way of the Lord, and, and be obedient, and, and live your life according to God's Word, and, and according to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. 
That's the way the spirit and the flesh, they, they are contrary to one another. The Bible says they war, they fight against one another. Listen, my friend, I'll say this morning, you and I, we don't stand a chance on our own. We don't stand a chance on our own. We need the help and the dependence upon the Lord every day. Just as these children for this battle, man, they needed God to intervene in a mighty way. They needed God, my friend, to, to come in and help them and fight the battle for them just as you and I do as well. The Bible went on to say there what happened. Said, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Listen, my friend, when we give up the guards sometimes, the flesh can kind of take over, don't it? What did Jesus tell his disciples? The Bible said that the Lord left them there in the garden. He said, I'm going to go over here and pray. And the Bible said that the Lord went and he prayed, but when he came back, what did he see? He found them asleep. And he told him, he said, could you not watch and pray? He said, for the, uh, for the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen? Listen, we need the help from the Lord. Uh, so when Moses, when he got tired and when he got weak and when his hands, when they begin to go down, my friend, the enemy, they begin to prevail. Uh, listen, my friend, it's important for you and I every day to try to keep our guard up. Amen? Uh, to try to keep our hands lifted up and our hands up depending on the Lord for His help and His strength through the battle. The Bible went on to say, verse 12, but Moses' hands were heavy. Sometimes we get a little tired, don't we? We get heavy with the burdens and the things and the cares of life. My friend, we get wore out. We get burdened down. It gets heavy. It gets hard. But the Bible said, here's what they did. And it said, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there on. Man, I got to thinking about that, and the Lord reminded me. They took that stone, and they put it under Moses, and they gave him a place to sit down uh, because he got to the place where my friend, Friend, he'd stood all that he could stand. And my friend, he was probably as tired as he could be. I like what the Bible said in the book of Ephesians. God said this, or, or Paul wrote to the Ephesian church, and he said, when you've done all that you can do, stand. Amen? Stand for the Lord. And he said, girt yourself. He said, put on the helmet of salvation. He said, put on the breastplate of righteousness. He said, take the shield of faith. He said, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. He said, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He said, have your loins girt about with truth. My friend, he said, when you've done all these things, all you can do is stand. My friend, Moses had stood as long as he could, but they got a stone for him to sit down on. Listen, my friend, he sat down on the very rock of ages. Amen? He sat down on the very star stone that was a firm foundation. He sat down, my friend, upon Jesus. He could rest upon the Lord. And my friend, have so Something solid uh, uh, for him to sit on uh, and rest on. Uh, listen, my friend, when we get so wore out uh, and we get weak and worn down from the battle and the cares of life uh, and we've done all we can do uh, and we've stood as long as we could stand, uh, uh, my friend, listen, uh, we've got one today uh, uh, that'll keep on standing. Uh, uh, we got one this morning, my friend, uh, uh, that you can rest on, uh, uh, that you can depend on, uh, and His name is Jesus. Jesus, amen. He'll be with you all the way, just as he was the people and Moses. And the Bible said, and Aaron and her, they stayed up his hands. My friend, he had one on one side holding up one hand, and her on the other holding the other one up. And my friend, listen, there was it took cooperation, didn't it? Amen. It took cooperation. And it took the whole team, it took a whole group effort for victory to come for the children of Israel. Listen, it took the ones down there fighting in the battle. It took Moses up on the mountain depending upon God and praying and my friend just asking God to help them in the fight and in the battle. It took Aaron holding up one hand and it took her holding up the other. It took a group effort uh, to see victory come that day with the help of the Lord. Listen my friend, it takes all of you and I as a church body, as a team, as one, as one, my friend working together. We've got to cooperate. We've got to work together. We've got to move together. We've got to serve together. We've got to work together with the Lord. Amen? If we're going to see great things happen, we've got to work together. And that's what they did. They worked together. 
And the Bible said that Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other, said his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. You know what brings victory this morning? My friend, when you're in the heat of the battle and in the heat of the war between the flesh and the spirit, you know what the greatest thing that you and I could have, the greatest weapon, is the very Word of God. The Word of God this morning, my friend. The Bible said the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God is the greatest weapon that we could have. The Bible said Joshua discomfited them with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek under, from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. What did Moses do, man? He built an altar for the Lord, didn't he? He built an altar for God. And you say, why did he build that altar? Moses built that altar because he knew that it was the very hand of God that day that brought them the victory. He knew that it was the very hand of God that day that, that whipped Amalek and gave them the victory because he knew that a bunch, the bunch of people that he had that was with him, that was journeying through, my friend, he knew they were not able to beat them, to whip them on their own. He knew God had to have a hand in it. And the Bible said that they named the place Jehovah Nessi, which means the Lord my banner. The Lord, my banner, my friend. They raised the banner that day. When you begin to study a little bit on this, uh, uh, when you study a little bit on the Hebrew history and everything like that on it, you'll find that they, what they were thought that they were talking about was the rod, the stick that Moses had held up uh, while they were in the battle. Uh, my friend, the Lord is my banner. Uh, he said this, he said, For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will give war, with Amalek from generation to generation. Say this morning in closing, as long as we're on this earth and we're on this journey to the promised land, we're going to have battles. And we're going to have to fight the enemy. And we're going to have war with the flesh and the spirit day in and day out. But I encourage you this morning, just as Moses depended upon God, I encourage us to depend upon the Lord. Amen? Because God will bring us through that battle. And he'll give us victory. And I believe with all my heart, just as Moses sat up there on that mountain, I believe he lifted his hands toward heaven in total dependence of God, praying and interceding that God would give victory for those people that day. Listen, my friend, that's the way we ought to be as well. We ought to just be standing and praying and be in total dependence upon the Lord for him to bring the victory for us in our life. Amen? Takes us all working together as one body, as one church, and I thank the Lord for that. Amen? Well, let's stand this morning. Let's pray, and uh, we'll have a time of invitation. If you feel the need to come and pray this morning, the altar's open. We encourage you to do so. We encourage you just to mind the Lord. Uh, but as they're coming together to sing this morning, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for another opportunity that you've given us and you've blessed us with. God, we thank you for coming to your house, Lord, and thank you for your word. And we pray, Father, just as your children, your people, Father, as they were on their journey to the promised land, Father, they come in contact, Lord, with, with, with this enemy, Father, Amalek. And, Father, we find here that, Lord, this was the first battle for the children of Israel, Father, the first wartime battle that, Father, they had to go through, Lord, uh, that was recorded in your word. And, Father, we see that, Father, through this first battle, Lord, that you brought great victory for them. But, Lord, it wasn't because they were a great and mighty soldier. And it wasn't because they were well-trained or well-prepared. But, Father, what it was was that, that you come through and you intervened. And, Father, they totally depended upon you for the victory. And, God, we thank you, Lord, that, God, you give them that victory. And we pray this morning that, Father, if there's someone here today fighting a battle or, or just the everyday battle, Father, between the, the flesh and spirit, we pray today that, God, we would have total dependence upon you. 
And God, we would pray and seek your face. And Father, when we've done all that we can do to stand, Father, help us, Lord, to just lean upon you, Father, the very rock of ages. Lord, the very firm foundation, knowing that, God, you're able, Lord, to bring us through and deliver us. And God, we thank you, Father, that, Lord, in those times of our weakness, Lord, we are made strong through you. We love you and thank you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Without Him I could do nothing Without Him I'd surely fail Without Him I would be drifting Like a ship without Yes. Uh-huh.